Are you f***ing kidding me? What? So I ran across this critter on Amazon. It's a sub $20 USB HDMI capture dongle that claims it can do 1080 30 and more importantly, 1080p 60 capture. Well, let's take the Pepsi challenge. And here it is. This is what arrived. And more importantly, it came in a box. I didn't expect a box. I'm up a box. I consider this an absolute win. But on the back, we do have our supported max resolutions, UHD at 30, output max resolutions, 1920 by 1080 at 30, and 1920 by 1080 at 60. So this is the part where I say what's in the box, because I just did. But genuinely, let's find out. I'm assuming there's not going to be much, because, well, there's not much to it. It's a dongle with... It's about what I was expecting. Our fold-out pamphlet of instructions. And that is most definitely some random OBS screenshots. But this is Linux, so let's not read any instructions and get right to it. It's made out of metal. Wasn't really expecting that, but that's always nice to see. And we can see the USB end is in fact blue. And the HDMI end is HDMI shaped. So, I think we're still ahead of the game here. Let's get it plugged in. With OBS on Linux, it's relatively straightforward. We're going to add a V4L2 device. I'm just going to call this USB 3 HDMI. Very original. And out of the box, we get something of a test pattern. Now, this is YUYV or just YUV442. It's going to be uncompressed. And the first thing I'm noticing is a relatively atrocious frame rate. Not that I expected it to be high, but I'm only seeing maybe three to five frames per second on this. So let's change it to something that requires a bit less bandwidth. And that's going to be BGR3. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and set this up like I would usually at 1080p. 60 partial, no buffering. Let's see what we get. Now I will be capturing from another PC in the studio, which is just outputting 1080p 60. And that is most definitely not 60. That is 1080p 30. For example, if you want to take a look at 1080p60, I also have the feed split into a Blackmagic 4K device, and yeah, there's a bit of a difference here, isn't there? Just a bit. But hey, let's see if the sound works. I'm going to head over to Pavu Control, and we have the device showing up. Let's put it on ICE 958 input, and if you're curious... What is it capturing at? That's going to be 16-bit, two-channel, at 48K, which is not terrible. And once we have that done, we'll head back to OBS and select a Pulse Audio input capture device. We'll name it something incredibly original, probably HDMI. And let's select our source and head down to OK. Now I need something to test that with, so I'm heading over to linuxschemecast.com and I'm going to use Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Because YouTube's gonna YouTube. And it works. No problems there. So it has that going for it. One thing I wanted to test was the Nikon D3400 that I use here in the studio. Since it's worked with every cheap USB 3, USB 2, PCI capture card that I've ever thrown at it. But no dice on this. It was absolutely impervious. No frame rate, color range, resolution, video format combination could get a signal from it. So much to where I was worried that the camera wasn't functioning. So, yeah, there it is working with the Blackmagic Intensity Pro. How about a little bit of a game capture? We're going to start with just Talos Principle because it's got the two things I really like in a game. That's grass and text. And this is the Blackmagic uh, Mini Recorder 4K. Gets the job done. It's nothing fancy, but it's a good baseline. You know, they're about 200 bucks. But let's balance that up against the free option, NDI. Using the OBS NDI plugin from computer to computer, 1080p60, it holds its own. You know, for the price, you can't really beat it. But we're here to see this guy, our USB 3 capture dongle. And of course, the first thing you're going to notice is a decided lack of 60 frames per second. Yeah, nothing you can do about that. 
However, I was surprised because the image quality, it's not bad. It would be absolutely usable. You can see in the three-way comparison, it holds up. The colors are a bit jacked up, but that's something you could always go back and fix. And I guess I should say, it can do 720p60. But at 1080p, you're going to be stuck with a uh, very retro 30 frames per second. Man, I got my suspicions, but we need to open this critter up and find out what the real problem is. And, um, well, let's take it. Are you f***ing kidding me? What? Wow. I didn't expect that. I did not expect this. I expected a lot of things, but not... Ah, oh, okay. Camera. The camera's upset, too. All right, I'm not really upset. I'm... I'm genuinely shocked. One, two, three, and four. That's four pins. No need to check the inside. I haven't checked. Yep. <laughs> this, this, ladies and gentlemen, is effectively a USB 2.0 connector that with a bad die job. Uh, now, USB 3.0 specs, they are backwards compatible with high speed, full speed, low speed data rates. So I guess technically you could call any device USB 3.0 running at 480 megabits. Maybe. Maybe that's legal somehow. But... You most certainly will not have the bandwidth to deliver 1080p60 using those four pins. That's not going to happen. Huh. Can... <laughs> speechless. Genuinely speechless. Um, did not expect that. That That is a new one. That is a new one. Well, I guess that's what you get for... Your sub $20 1080p60 USB 3.0 with an asterisk on Amazon, man. Wow. Stay away from that one unless you want a card that can, well, a dongle that can do 720p60. But yeah, really shocking to see that on Amazon. But hey, look at these beautiful people. They make all of this possible. They are our patrons. Um, go check it out. We got a bunch of bonus stuff for people who are able to support the show or, you know, drop a comment if you have a question or anything like that in the YouTube video, it will be brilliant. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast and LinuxGamecast.com. That's where we are. All right. Hopefully that was informative. Maybe I saved you a whopping $18.